On a steamy summer day in the River City, the young Democrats and the Republican mayor would stand off over a bingo fundraiser. In 1945, the Republicans and Democrats were gearing up for the upcoming election. Republican Mayor Manson Reichart announced that fraternal organizations and patriotic nonprofits were again allowed to hold bingo games for events, including his own caravan club. The young Democrats wanted to hold their own bingo games to raise funds for the upcoming election. When the Young Men's Democratic Club was denied necessary permits, they claim partisan bias was behind the decision. With the denial of a permit, the Democrats pushed forward with their plan to host their own games. As word spread of this announcement, Mayor Reichart then stated, I will stop the game if I have to go down there myself and take the whole police force with me. On June 11, 1945, the Young Democrats held their non-permitted bingo game at Union Hall, historically known as Merchants National Bank, located at the corner of First and Main in downtown Evansville. A crowd of operators, players, and spectators of around 10,000 gathered to watch the event unfold. But of course, there are rabble rousers in both camps, you know, kind of ratcheting up the tension. And it's that tension that the crowds are responding to. Um, they trickle in a few at a time, 100 at a time, 200 at a time, and then word goes out across the city, this is a thing that's happening, come watch, come see what's going to happen, because nobody knew if it was going to be a big raid, is it going to be a fight, is it going to be a real riot, nobody really knew. The one thing to say for the crowd is, though, it was not a drunken crowd, it was not one really seeking to agitate. There were a few agitators amongst the crowd, but the majority of the crowd was there to observe. Uh, the newspapers report there were women in the crowd, um, which at that point in time, the crowd would be hesitant to engage in violence if women are in the crowd, given the social norms. There were babies, women had babies and young children there. So they were on the rooftops, they were on the fire escapes. At one point, it was more concerned with the number of people on the fire escapes than it was the number of people on the streets because they were afraid it was going to collapse because you're not supposed to put 100 people on a fire escape and sit, sit there for a couple of hours. So the fire department's trying to get in there and get that situation uh, dealt with. And, you know, your, your agitators, from what we know of the cases and what we know of the first-hand account counts, were the younger groups of teenage boys who took advantage of the situation, and a little bit of that mob mentality builds, and two police cars were flipped. And it wasn't just two teenagers, it was a group of them, generally between six and 12, depending on the account, obviously enough to flip a police car, which is quite heavy. Eventually, the police stopped the event and arrested 12 trustees that took part in forming the bingo game. As the days passed, a trial was scheduled for June 14th for the 12 arrested trustees. Uh, there was a number of charges laid on, and um, you'll see that there were hesitations and back and forth and changes to what they were charged with, because it was very much a political um, arrest. It's a political situation. So the one that sticks is the violation of the, the gambling ordinance. You had, you know, at one point there was a um, disturbing the peace, maintaining a common nuisance. Those are all, those are crimes that are still around today. So, you know, if you get arrested with marijuana, marijuana is a prohibited drug, is a prohibited activity. Uh, if they, the police have someone at your house while you have that there, they're going to attack on that second charge of um, maintaining a common nuisance. That means you're creating a space within the community that is allowing crime or criminal mischief to happen. So that's what he was charging the, the trustees with, is they were creating this space that was allowing other criminal activity to occur. The case was formally dismissed on January 10th, 1946, for lack of sufficient evidence. After the bingo riot case, the criminal practices conducted by Mayor Reichart were exposed. This would lead to his indictment. And what the charge ended up being was, to kind of simplify it a little bit, he was going to a vendor, so a business, and saying, donate a thousand dollars to my campaign, we'll reimburse you. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a business transaction fee. And um, instead of 
reimbursing that money, he kept it in his pocket for uh, different political and campaign activity. So it's, you know, it's fraudulent activity. It's, you know, bullying, it's intimidation. Uh, and the question becomes, under the law, not if it's ethically or morally correct, but under the law at that time, is it a crime? And once again, you're stepping into the politics of, and the, you know, the whole political perception and um, all of that sort of stew is again in the mix in Evansville and are, they can charge him, but is there the political will to prosecute? Is there political will to convict? And that's another situation that kind of um, is pushed for a little bit and then it just goes away. After the dismissal of charges, Mayor Reichart would soon find himself out of office. In 1947, he would lose his re-election race for mayor, and in 1948, he would lose the election for chairman of the Vandenberg County Republican Party. In the aftermath of these events, gambling remained a controversial topic in Indiana. Finally, in 1993, an act was passed which issued five riverboat gambling licenses from the state including one on the Ohio River at Evansville. As the Aztar Riverboat Casino opened in 1995, it would also open the door for further legislation on the matter. Laws would be passed in the new millennium that would finally allow gambling on land in Indiana. The Evansville Riverboat closed its doors on October 16, 2017 for good. Three days later, Evansville's new $50 million land-based casino officially opened for business. The bingo riot of 1945 grew out of the political tensions of the time and would shine a light on corrupt practices. A result of the unrest from the summer of 45 would eventually lead to reform efforts in local government and patronage. This has been an F.J. Wright's Feel the History production.